Testament, we are told God knows just how much we can bear and will not let Satan go beyond that point. 1 Corinthians, <coughs> 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. Uh, Luke 22, verse 31 and 32 says this, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. That verse to Simon is the Lord spoke to Simon. We, we can go that and bring that back to Job. Satan wanted Job. He wanted to bring him down. Hebrews 12, verse 6 and verse 11 uh, says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Uh, it's quoted from or alluded to 36 times <coughs> by 16 New Testament books. Satan, of course, appears uh, right off, doesn't he? Job knew nothing about Satan's challenge to God and had no idea that the enemy was using him as a reason for slandering the Lord. Neither did Job uh, know that God would use his sufferings to defeat Satan. God's people are soldiers on the battlefield, but there are times uh, when we are the battlefield. We obey God only because He blesses us. The shallowness of our faith will show up in the testing time. I mean, if God blessed, if all God did was to bless those who would follow Him, then everybody would follow Him for the for blessings, not for Him. Say, do we really love Him? Do we really care for Him? Do we really believe Him? All those things are discovered. Uh, not to God, but to us and to others around us during uh, times of testing, during times of battles. Uh, if our faith cannot be tested, it cannot be trusted. James 1 and 1 Peter 1. When Satan accuses us before <coughs> God, remember that Jesus Christ is defending you as your advocate in heaven. And uh, we can uh, trust him to do a good job. Let's think about Satan here for a moment. Satan is a rebellious angel who was judged by God and fell from holiness to wickedness. Uh, angels fell with him, other angels. Uh, and they make up his army of spirits opposed to God and God's people. They hate God. They are the enemies of God and they're the enemies of God's people. Because Satan is a created being, he is not equal to God, though he possesses tremendous wisdom and power. Uh, and uh, he's still subject to God. Uh, he's a liar and a murderer, an adversary, the God of this age, the ruler of this world, a deceiver, a destroyer uh, and a counterfeiter of God. The word Satan means adversary and devil means slanderer or accuser. Satan can seek to deceive your mind. He loves to do that. Snatch away God's word. Attack your body. That's what we're going to see here. He messes with Job's body. Job 2 which messes with your mind. If you see anybody or uh, minister to anybody that's sick over a long period of time, it's uh, normal in that situation to find that person depressed in some form or fashion. And uh, you would be. I mean, I have to deal with a sickness, a chronic illness for a length of a period of time. We're only human. Human suffering is uh, is going to mess even with the the spiritual things. Uh, he wants to destroy your possessions, Job one thirteen. 
hinder your work for the Lord, <clears throat> make you proud and get you to fall that way. 1 Timothy 3. Cause persecution, tempt you to sin. And when you have sin, he can, he'll then accuse you and discourage you. Or when you mess up, or when you fail. Okay? Uh, but uh, if people do f fail, First John 1, 9, you, you can take those failures, you can take that sin and confess it to the Lord. He's faithful, He's just to forgive you. In His life, death, resurrection, ascension, Christ defeated Satan and His uh, evil host. God's people must recognize the devil and know when he is at work. Respect him because he is powerful and subtle and resist him with the word of God and prayer. Uh, the believer must wear the whole armor of God and use the spiritual equipment. There is overcoming power in the blood of Christ and the power of the Spirit. Do not give place to the devil, uh, the Bible says in Ephesians 4.27. And Paul named some sins that can give Satan a foothold in your life. Lust, lying, anger, stealing, corrupt speech, evil speaking, an unforgiving spirit, bitterness, malice, and so on. Any simple thing that belonged to your old life can be used by the devil to ruin your new life. So be sure to keep your heart clean before the Lord. Satan still has access to heaven. You see this, we find this out in Job 1, chapters 1 and 2. Also, Zechariah chapter 3 is a good chapter to look at. One day he will be thrown out, Revelation 12, uh, when the Lord Jesus comes to establish his kingdom. He will cast Satan into hell, the lake of fire, where he will be tormented forever. Hell was prepared for Satan and his angels, but people who reject Christ and believe Satan's lies will suffer in hell with him. I know the cults, you got some cults that don't want to believe in hell. You got a whole new generation of uh, church going people that don't want to believe in hell. Hell is as real as heaven. Okay. And it's just. Okay. Personally, I don't want to go there. Personally. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to be going there, not because I'm good or righteous, but because of Jesus Christ, His righteousness, His, uh, His sacrifice for my sins. He took my place. Okay. Now there was a man in the land of Uz, chapter Job 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, <laughs> and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Okay, so uh, he's a godly man. Uh, Roy Zuck wrote additional biographical facts about this patriarch or given elsewhere in the book of Job. He was highly respected. Job 29, verse 7 to 11. He was fair and uh, he was a fair and honest judge. Uh, chapters 29, verse 7, and verses 12 through 17. He was a wise counselor. Job 29, verse 21 through 24. He was an honest employer. Job 31, verse 13 through 15, and verse 38 and 39. He was hospitable and generous. Job 31, verse 16 through 21 and verse 32. And he was a farmer of crops. Uh, Job 31, verse 38 through 40. Job's family. Uh, Job 1, 2 and 4, 5. And there were born unto him seven sons. And three daughters, and his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings 
according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God <clears throat> in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Wow, so it seems like he has a little bit of concern about his, uh, where his kids are standing with the Lord and where his children's walk with the Lord is, okay? Not only is he trying to teach them right, but also to detect a little bit, maybe, um, you know, maybe they're not all in like he is, okay? Uh, verse 3, his substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 uh, sheet onks, and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all men of the East. So he, he's a wealthy, he's got it going. He's been blessed in a lot of ways. Uh, so he he's the he's the wealthy guy. Mm. Mm. Uh, but he goes through some terrible trials. Uh, <clears throat> somebody has said, "Well, you know, one thing about not having anything <laughs> is you can't. If you had it, you you can only lose it." And he says, "At least I can't lose it, <laughs> you know, because I I've heard people say I don't have anything, so I can't lose it." Well, he's going to lose what he has. Uh, Job 1, verse 14, 15, His oxen and donkeys were stolen, and his farm hands were killed by a Sabian raid. So again, you know, if people come in, you know, you may have something precious to you. Some people have precious family heirlooms. Just some thief comes and steal it, and it's gone forever. Uh, verse 16, Job 1, his sheep and herdsmen were burned up by fire. Uh, verse 17, his camels were stolen and his servants killed by Chaldean raid. Wow, man. Now remember Satan said, God, you protecting him. You protecting him. Quit protecting him. You know, let me rough him up a little bit. If I rough him up a little bit, he'll curse you. He won't be all I love God stuff, man. He'll let you, he'll really tell you what he really thinks. Okay? So that's the background. And uh, so now Satan uh, is leading to rough him up a little bit. Uh, verse 18 his sons and daughters perished in a mighty wind. What a tragedy. What a catastrophe. Uh, now. <coughs> I don't know about you, but here's a person serving the Lord, giving him all, I mean, loving the Lord. He loved the Lord with all his heart. Um, and he, he started to lose everything. Chapter 2, verse 7, Job himself was struck with a terrible case of boils. So all this stuff around him now, him personally, okay? And uh, uh, it takes place. All of these resulted from two separate confrontations in heaven between God and Satan. Uh, chapter 1, verse 6 through 8. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord. Uh, then, then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect man, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Uh, verse nine to eleven. Chapter 1. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for not? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. Okay. Uh, so uh, he's slandering Job. Okay. You know, you just got to put Job in the right situation. 
and uh, Joe be just like everybody else, and uh, he'll show you, okay, and uh, in that. So verse 12, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Chapter 2, verse 1 and verse 3, Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? Perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and skeweth evil. And still he holdeth, holdeth fast, fast his integrity. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. Uh, and Satan, uh, verse 4 and 5, Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse thee to thy face. Okay. Chapter 2, verse 6. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. You can't kill him. Okay. So nothing's going to happen to you until the Lord says, Okay, you're going to be here until the Lord says, uh, you're out of here. Okay. Now the Bible does teach we can do have the sin unto death, we can speed up our time. Uh, different things like that, okay? But uh, no, he's still in the hands of God. All right? Uh, also, Satan cannot tempt or torment a believer apart from the sp specific permission of God. Okay? Uh, the first time Satan was prohibited from t even touching Job, on the same occasion, he was allowed to touch him, but was forbidden to kill him. Uh, so, uh, during the first four uh, events that we talked about, that affected his fortune and family, and then the final affecting his flesh. This was on the final chapters 2, verse 10. Second part, shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall not we receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. So here's was Job's response. Job, I mean, if a lost person would come to Job, why are you serving God? You know, still, I mean, look how he's treating you. And Job's response is, shall we not receive bad days, or bad things? It's not always going to go great in this world and in this life. Uh, so you see his maturity. Uh, and uh, well, he talks about uh, attributing both good and evil to God. The Hebrew word translated evil is ra, R-A. In the majority of the cases where this is found, it refers to wickedness and sin. But a number of notable <coughs> exceptions, the word speaks not of sin, but rather that of divine Judgment or calamity. Okay. Um, then his wife. <laughs> Chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. So sometimes, man, life can be falling apart and uh, you, who's supposed to be your biggest supporter comes, joins right in there, you know. So this was happening with Job. Uh, and then he had uh, friends, but with friends like this who needs enemies. Hmm. Job's three friends heard... Uh, of all this evil that was come upon him, they, they came, everyone, from his own place, uh, Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Namathite, for they had made, and now I'm reading Job 2, verse 11 through 13, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him, 
and to comfort him. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept. And they rent everyone his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him. For they saw that his grief was very great. I've heard a preacher say if they would have just kept being quiet. <laughs> I mean, there they were quiet for all those days if they would have just never opened their mouth, the thing would have been okay. Uh, hmm. uh, they came to sympathize, though. Yeah. But uh, as they stayed, uh, they didn't just sympathize. Uh, Job's three friends delivered eight full-blown messages, all with three points and a point, to the long-suffering patriarch. Eliphaz preached three of, of these, chapters 4 uh, and 5, and uh, chapters 15 and 22. Bildad 3, chapters 8, 18 and 25, and so far, being less winded, came up with two, chapters 11 and 20. No sooner, however, had these tiresome trio finished than the filibuster began again by a young preacher boy named Elihu, who drones on for six chapters, chapters 32 through 37. Uh, And uh, they didn't care. <clears throat> they didn't care that their audience was very small. They just continued on and preached. Okay, they had a message for Job, and uh, they had it. If you've ever had somebody misjudge you on anything, not know all the facts, and come and act like they were sent from God to tell you something, man. Uh, if you ever dealt with the, the people like the friends of Job, man, it can be uh, it can be very discouraging and very disheartening. And as far as for us, we need to just be careful that uh, we're sent from God. Uh, Eliphaz, his authority was wrong. He based his words on personal experience. <laughs> you see that in chapter <clears throat> four, chapter five. And uh, his assumption was wrong. Eliphaz assumed Job was suffering because of some terrible unconfessed sin or sins. Uh, I know someone very dear to me who's had a long illness and uh, he had this uh, wise guy just like Job's friend come and say, there must be something, you know, like that. You know, something going on. I think, you know, and uh, people like that just need to get get smacked down. You know. <laughs> my grandmother suffered. My grandmother was one of the most godly people there was, and she suffered from uh, crippling arthritis. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had many things through life. Even as a child, uh, her neck was like this. The body would do the surgery around here. She had to go up in Boston, to Boston have a surgery, stay in the hospital up there by herself, <coughs> no family up there. Uh, this is when she was a uh, uh, young teenager. And uh, there was, thank God, God had a nurse up there that took care of her and became sort of like a uh, mom to her. You know. uh, There was just other things. I think I think my poor grandmother suffered some way or another her whole life, you know. But God, man, God loved the Lord, loved the Lord. She had uh, people from a certain uh, church background. They were friends, like Job's friends, and she still had them over, and they, you know, but uh, they had this uh, wrong mentality, you know. Well, God wants to heal you from this, and. Now, if you're not getting healed, then some, you know, again, what's the insinuation or the straight out charge is, you know, you must not be where you need to be with God. 
Well, nobody's where they need to be with God. But I mean, that, that's just not good theology. And, uh, this was the theology of Eliphaz, and God's going to get all over his uh, case about it. His accusations were wrong. He accused Job of uh, cheating the poor, chapter 22, verse 6, withholding bread from the hungry, uh, 22, verse 7. Uh, mistreating widows and orphans, 22 verse 9, and uh, he was a windbag in chapter 15 verse 2. They, I mean, they let him have it, okay? I mean, good old friends. <laughs> His advice was wrong. He urged Job to repent and turn back to God. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Built up, thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. 22-23. Uh, Bill Dad, same thing. He was